Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you all the basics on how to create your own Nintendo 3DS themes. Now if you don't want to create them and you'd rather download, I'll leave a link down below for Theme Plaza, which you can go and grab a majority of the things you need. But uh, I'm getting real sick of the plain stock themes on the 3DS and I'm just going to be jumping in on how to create my own. So let's just jump right into it. Alright, so to start off we're going to be on the PC here and we're going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call this My Theme. You can call this whatever you'd like. Um, let's put this right over here. And now we're gonna open up Chrome here and we're gonna have the Kame Editor. Now, a lot of people when they're doing this like using Usagi. I do not like using the Usagi Editor just because you need a uh, separate audio converter for your files, like Loop Audio Converter, for example. Kame Editor doesn't have this problem and you can actually convert your files inside here, no problem. So that's why I'm gonna be going with this today. So to grab this, just go to Downloads and select your version here. I'm gonna do Windows 64-bit. Now it's pretty fast, so right click, show in folder, right click and extract to, and then we'll just open this up. And we have the kameeditor.exe. Now when this opens, you'll see you have your 3DS display here. You may have tabs open, you may not have tabs open if it's like that for you. Uh, if you hover over the buttons here on the 3DS display, you're gonna notice it says show hide theme info widget, um, show hide color widget, just a whole bunch of things. If you select these buttons, it'll actually open up the tabs for you. And uh, actually this looks pretty good how it is right now. So to start things off, we're gonna go to textures and screen appearances. I think that's the main thing everybody wants to see, right? So we're gonna go with the top screen first. The draw type, we're gonna select as texture. You could also change this as colors if you'd like, but I'm doing texture. And the first image file it gives you for selection, it gives you the size down below of 512 by 256. This is for a standard still image, like if you're flipping through your pages and the, it's still the same image on every page. Uh, I want more of a panoramic type view, so if you go down to frame type, you can select a slow scroll, which will increase the image size to 1024 by 256. Now let me show you how to get your image. So for me, I already have everything I'm using today, and I'm gonna be using old desktop screensavers that I've had. So open up your uh, image editing software. For me, I'm gonna use uh, paint.net. It's a free software. You can use GIMP or anything you'd like to use. Go to file, new, uh, 1024 by 256. It's already in here because I've done this before. So just hit okay. And now we just have to fill this up with something that we want. Now I've already grabbed everything that I want to use today and I got it on my desktop. I'm gonna go with, uh, actually it might not be here anymore. Oh yeah, it is, it's right here. Weird how it wouldn't let me select it through there. So anyways, you have uh, my desktop image here. Open up our editing software. Go to edit, paste into new layer, keep canvas size. And now you see we have this image that fits where we need it to, but I am gonna shrink it a smidge. Size it up to where I need it to be, which looks fine here. And then we'll just blow it out a little bit. And that looks fine for me. If you wanna doctor this up however you'd like, you can, but basically it just has to fit within this image size. I'm gonna file, save as, and I'm gonna save this into my theme that I created earlier. You can see I have that up top. I'm gonna do save as a PNG, and I'm gonna name this top.png, because this will be the top half of my screen. So I'm gonna do save, okay, flatten the image. And now we should be able to select it inside of Kame Editor. So let's go into my theme, wherever that may be, select top. And now you'll see the top half of the 3DS display has changed, and I can actually cycle through and you'll see the pages moving. So that's pretty neat. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing to the bottom screen. We can open this up, select your draw type as texture once again, go into image. And uh, again, this is for a still image, so we're gonna go to frame type. And we have multiple options for the bottom screen. We have a bounce scroll, page scroll, slow scroll, and fast scroll. I'm gonna do slow scroll again, and it's gonna be the same exact image size as before. Since I showed you how to make that, I already have one created, so I don't have to do that for you twice. So go to desktop do the bottom PNG, and here we have it. Same thing, you can scroll and see the image. 
So now we can go ahead and do folder icons or file icons, but I'm not gonna do too much because I don't want this video to be too long today. So I'm gonna keep this empty for now and let's just move over to the colors tab. Now in colors, we can go over to, let's say cursor and we can change our cursor color. So to start off, why don't we go with glow and we'll change this to, why not? Red looks pretty good. Uh, maybe, maybe a slightly lighter red. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Now I'm gonna hit okay. And honestly, I kind of like how it has the black edges. I think it looks good as is. If you wanna adjust these more, you can, but this is fine for me. Uh, next up, we have our arrow buttons. Let's go with that. Select main, and you're gonna see everything change right here to black. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna switch this over to blue. But what color blue? I like a lighter blue. This doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna do okay again close this and now we have arrow buttons arrow this is the arrow inside of this so if I go to uncompressed it automatically switched it to black and I think black looks pretty good so I'm gonna do okay we have our open and close buttons which you got to be careful if you're using your scroll wheel on this it will make this dial turn so be careful with that uh, go to main and I think if we hit these two back arrows here Yes, it'll show you old color palettes that we've been using. So I'm gonna select this. I think that looks about the same. So I'm gonna do okay. And now we're gonna go down a little lower. You're gonna see close button, same thing. Select main, probably select the previous color as well. Hit okay. Now we can close this tab. Now we have folder view, folder back button. I think we'll just do the corner buttons and we'll be done with the colors here. So I'm gonna go to main. Same thing, I'm gonna select the old color because I just wanna keep it consistent. You guys can change your colors however you'd like. Hit okay again. Bottom corner buttons, hit main. Same thing, hit okay. And I think we're about done with our colors. So next thing, which is probably the, uh, I guess the hardest part, it's not really that hard, but it's a little, can be a little confusing. If you've used Usagi, you probably already are used to converting your audio with the loop audio converter for either your background music or your sound effects. So if we go to converter, we're gonna select our file here. We're gonna start off with our background music. Now I already have my background music on my desktop. You can see I have 3ds theme dot wave. You want this to be in a dot wave format. MP3 isn't the best. It might not even work. So just try to make it dot wave. Uh, you can see my file size is 24.5 megabytes versus Usagi. I think it had to be 3.3 megabytes, but I'm just gonna double click on that. And if we hit play, starts right up. So that's pretty good. Now we have an option here. You can tick for looping, which I have that checked and it's gonna start at zero and end when the song ends. You can adjust that as well, however you'd like it. Your format, since we're doing background music, needs to be BGM for background music. So that's already good. And now we have a destination of where the background music is gonna save when it's all done, which I'm gonna save it to my theme. And you want to always name your background music BGM, nothing else, no titles, just BGM. Then hit save. And now it's gonna ask you if you want to assign it. So if you go ahead and open this up, you can assign it to BGM directly and then hit convert, which is exactly what we wanna do. So let's just finish. It might start up automatically can pause that so if I minimize the converter you're gonna see background music is already selected it's here it's already converted into BC STM format and it's good so now we're gonna go with sound effects if I open up the sound effects tab here we're gonna have cursor launch folder a bunch of op uh, options here close frame zero frame one I'm only gonna do one sound effect because I could go through all these it would take a while the only thing worth noting is that you do have a sound effects limit, which will tell you up here. As you put these in, a bar will increase telling you how far you can go. So I'm gonna minimize this and go to converter. For format, we're gonna select sound effects this time, and then we're gonna include our sound effect. Now, if I go back to my desktop, I already have a sound effect made. It's in the dot wave format again, and I'll just press play so you guys can hear it. For this, I have it set to non-looping, starts at zero, ends when it ends. And there's more information if you wanna click that, but I think we're good with that. The destination, we're also gonna save this into my theme. And since this is gonna be my cursor theme, I'm gonna just call this cursor. And then hit save. Now we're gonna hit uh, assign. 
assign it to cursor, and then hit convert. Once that's done, we can go ahead and open the sound effects tab again. You'll see that the cursor.bc wave is already in here. You can see the uh, the bar went up a little bit and we have 127 kilobytes out of 183. So, I mean, it did take up a good chunk, so you might want to use smaller ones if you're doing more, but uh, it should let you know if it works. Now, if we minimize this, you can also hit play to animate the 3DS display. You can see it blinking and cycling through tabs. But uh, let's go ahead and switch over to the next settings. So now it's going to pretty much ask you what the language of this is going to be. For me, it's English, your console skin. You have multiple options, 2DS, 3DS XL, new 3DS XL. Mine's just going to be for 3DS. You have an option for autoplay BGM. You want that checked. Show folder, hit that checked. Uh, I don't think you really need to mess with anything else on this page. The next thing will be the theme info. And this is what it's going to look like and what it's going to say when it's all packaged up nice and neat. So go to required fields and we're gonna to need to select an icon that people are gonna see when they download this. So we're gonna see the size is 48 by 48. So let's go ahead and hit new. We'll do 48 by 48 in our editor. And then we'll throw a picture in. Now on my desktop, I'm gonna throw in my bottom PNG this time. I'm gonna go into edit, uh, paste in a new layer, keep canvas size. And then I'm gonna look around for this guy because I think it'd be pretty funny. I'm probably not going to include this to download for anybody because this is just pretty much a goof showing you guys all the basics. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. We'll just leave it like that. Go to File, Save As. We'll call this Icon. Save it into your Themes folder. And I'm going to make this a .png. And that's good. So let's open the Kame Editor again. Go into your theme and select your icon. Now you're gonna have a short title, long title, and publisher. So short title, I'm just gonna call this uh, my theme, which I butchered. There you go. And then the long theme, I really like this theme. And I spelt it wrong, of course. And the publisher name is me, so Jeremy. And I think that's about it. You have optional fields you can select for smaller icons. You can make this region free, whole bunch of things. Uh, I'm not gonna go through any of that. Now, if you want to export this, you can see the option for source here. If we click this, you're gonna have uh, other things that pop up for save, save as, click it again. You're gonna get deploy, load and save. Deploy is what we actually want. So where it says deploy, go over and hit save, and this will save it as a zip for us into our theme. I'm gonna call this my theme again. Hit save. And once it's all done, we can go ahead and plug in our 3DS SD card. So let me go ahead and do that. Should only take me a second. And we're gonna wanna put our themes onto our SD card now. So if you have used, uh, say, Anamone in the past, you might already have a theme folder. If you do not, just right click, create a new folder. And we're gonna call this themes with a capital T. Open up this folder. And now we have to find our little My Themes folder that I created earlier, right here. So now you'll see we have MyTheme.zip, which was just created when we exported out of the Kame editor. And we're just gonna drag and drop that right into here. And that's pretty much it. Now we can go ahead and take the SD card out, head over to 3DS, and we'll test this and see how it works. Okay, so first things first, when you're on the 3DS, we're going to navigate over to Anamone. If you don't have this, I do have uh, other tutorials out there where I showed the install, but I will leave the install for Anamone also in the description for those of you that just want to grab it now. So let's go ahead and open this up. Just give it a second. And you're going to see we have my theme here. I'm just going to do A for hold to install. And uh, you're gonna see all of our options are on the top half of the screen. So while you're holding A, it's gonna give you an option for normal install. All you gotta do is hold up on the D-pad, keep holding up and let go of the A button. And now it's gonna say install a single theme and you should get a check mark when it's complete. Now all we have to do is just go home and we're gonna close Anamone. And then we're gonna restart our 3DS. And now once it starts up, you should see everything working like normal. You can hear the background music starting up. Uh, you can hear the sound effects that I put with the cursor. 
I know this would get a little annoying if you're doing this repetitively, but this isn't meant to uh, really be used, more just to show you guys how this is done. I still think it's pretty hilarious though. But I think I'm gonna start wrapping the video up here. That's the gist of how any of this is done. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Adios. Thank you.